I will begin this way, and you will be surprised. Uh, you will be surprised how I will begin. I did not want to come. <laughs> I have worked with uh, the student movement all around the world for almost 60 years. <laughs> and um, I thought, my time with student is over. I want to concentrate on local church work. And so for the last 25 years, I have been with Bible Institute of Hawaii. It is not a seminary. We intentionally concentrate on training lay leaders from the church. Now in a way, that is the same as the work when I used to be with the students. And that is training them to be Christian leaders wherever they are. Now I still believe 200% in the student work. <laughs> because I still consider it one of the most strategic ministries in the whole kingdom of God. Now this is not to take credit for IFES. But I, as I look back, I realize that God raised up IFES about 65 years ago. Uh, uh, God uh, uh, began to raise up student movements around the world. Ketika saya melihat ke belakang Tuhan memang begitu memberkati pelayanan IFES ini 50 tahun 60 tahun yang lalu. And this was during a time when the churches were becoming local churches were becoming stronger. But as you know, traditionally, the leadership, the authority, are mainly in the hands of the top church staff. Now, this is not wrong. This is not wrong. I'm not saying this is wrong. Uh, but I think it is human nature. It is very natural. That whenever we begin an organization or an institution, there will always be people who come up. It's very natural. People rise up to leadership. You know, as well as I, certain people have more power. And whether it is political or, uh, in the government or in the church or in the family, there can be very strong leaders. We need strong leaders. But we need strong leaders that base their convictions on God's word. So that authority comes from God and not from our own human imagination. And so, whether I have been with student work or in church work, 
the principles, the guidelines, are very clear from the Bible. Pemimpin gereja maupun di pelayanan mahasiswa, guideline dari Alkitab ini jelas buat saya. Now I worked in uh, Asia, East Asia, for about 16 years. Saya melayani di Asia Tenggara, Asia, Asia Timur. And uh, when I first, 16 tahun. 16. 16 tahun. Uh -huh. um, I began in 1962. I had already been. Enam <laughs> dua. Um, I had already been with the American work for seven years. Seven. Seven years. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody playing America is two years old. But when I became a Christian as a teenager, remaja saya jadi Kristen. My parents came from China. I thought, well, I want to be a missionary in China. But I did not go to China until about 10 years ago. <laughs> because, <laughs> uh, because um, after I finished my college, my university, and my seminary graduate work, China. Uh, the bamboo curtain had descended. And so I could not go to China. So I stayed in uh, America and was involved in student evangelism. And that's all in God's plan. If I had gone to China immediately after seminary or graduate work, I probably would not be here with you. I would not have become involved in student ministry. When I first came to Asia, I went to Hong Kong. And, and I thought, oh, at last I am fulfilling my promise to God that I would work with China. At that time, IFES was very young. And in Asia, there were only three movements. Uh, today, I think there are 16. Now, I did not know, I, I was not impressed at that time uh, with the progression of God's work in among the students. But after one year in Hong Kong, the Philippine movement said, "Come over and help us." Layanan perkantas di Filipina mengundang beliau. And they were already established. It was one of the first movements to be established in Asia. Filipina salah satu yang sudah ada layanan mahasiswa waktu itu. And I was there for one year. Saya di sana satu tahun. Then the Vietnamese said. The student said, we need help. <laughs> and so that's how it developed. I had no idea that eventually God was going to lead me all around the world. Eventually, uh, I went to Sudan uh, two years ago. Pada pelayanan pelayanan selanjutnya, pelayanan mahasiswa dan Sudan dua tahun yang lalu. That was my one hundred fifteenth year. One hundred. It doesn't matter. But what I am telling you, 
I, when I write your names, I was very interested in your background as much as I could understand. Saya coba mengingat apa yang kalian perkenalkan tadi, saya sudah catat. Penting buat saya. I think you are more mature than I had expected. <laughs> Awalnya saya berharap yang ikut ini mungkin senior semua. And I write down your name so I can pray for you. And I get to know you, and I will call on you. Saya akan doakan nama nama ini dan akan memanggil kalian, menantang kalian. Wait, I can call on you <laughs> because you know that is what God's work is about. It doesn't depend on one or two or three. It depends on every follower of Jesus. Hey, you should. Okay. <laughs> Kalian semua penting jadi nama-nama akan diingat karena ini peran banyak orang dan kepemimpinan ini ya. Do we really need a translator? <laughs> okay. Now, about after I had worked in Asia for about uh, I don't know about 10 years. In, in in other countries, in the Caroline. Uh, there was a brother who was in the Australian movement, uh, student movement. Seorang yang sedang terlibat dalam pelayanan Australia, mahasiswa Australia. Sun Sirigar. Namanya Sun Sirigar. Does anybody know him? You know. Okay, I'm but, very glad. But his name, at least. Do you know Sukarno? Oh. <laughs> okay. See, that's how old I am. <laughs> um, it was Sun Sirigar that had the vision for a student work in Indonesia. Pak Sun Sirigar punya visi pelayanan mahasiswa untuk Indonesia. And he said, Ada, can you come over and help us? Beliau mengundang ibu. Ibu Eda ke Indonesia. Ya? Yeah, and uh, uh, there was a small little group in Jakarta. Ada kelompok kecil di Jakarta. Maybe only about a dozen, about ten. Dua belasan well. orang. But that's the group that I worked with. And how to study the Bible? Saya mulai melayanan dengan kelompok ini belajar PA. How, how to lead two kinds of Bible study groups? Memimpin dua jenis kelompok PA. One for believers. Satu untuk orang percaya. And one for seekers. Satu untuk orang yang masih mempertimbangkan. And I remember those early days that there was no staff worker. Saya ingat waktu itu belum ada staff. Only committed student. Hanya mahasiswa yang komit terhadap pelayanan. But that was the group that was the nucleus of Procantus. Ya, kelompok itu menjadi cikal bakal perkantas Indonesia. And we met in the home of one of the medical students. Saya kami berkumpul di rumah salah seorang mahasiswa medis, dokteran. I have forgotten his name. Saya lupa namanya. But he was a very very faithful brother. Ya, orang yang sangat setia. His mother was a single mom. Ya, punya single parent, mama aja. So she had to work hard to keep her son in university. Mamanya bekerja keras untuk menguliahkan dia. And he became a doctor. Dan dia menjadi doktor. And he soon uh, he continued to be a very faithful member of that small student group. Dia anggota kelompok PA yang setia. And of course that grew and grew and grew and grew. Dan kelompok itu berkembang berkembang. So that Procantus in a real way is a, a, a very remarkable story of what God has done. Sesungguhnya Perkantas adalah kisah luar biasa tentang apa yang Allah perbuat buat. And I'm glad to share that bit with you. Saya senang bisa berbagi kisah ini dengan Anda. You did ask me about a year ago, please can you come over and help us? Tahun lalu Kak Yudit mengundang beliau untuk membantu pelayanan kita. Not with the students directly, but with the staff. 
untuk melayani staf bukan mahasiswa secara langsung. And I don't, oh, I don't think that I can because I'm so involved with uh, my other work. Saya ragu bisa memenuhinya waktu itu. And I really felt that my days in the student ministry were over. Lagi saya telah berpikir sebenarnya masa saya di pelayanan mahasiswa sudah selesai. Now, you know you did much better than I do. Kalian kenal Kak Yudit? She does not give up quickly. <laughs> ya, tidak mudah menyerah. And sometimes you may think, oh, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that. I know how you may feel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think she is like Paul the Apostle. Ya, kayak Rasul Paulus. Ya. We have to have people like that. Kita memang punya, harus punya orang-orang seperti Kak Yudit. And she did not give up. Tidak mudah menyerah. At last August I was here in Surabaya. Agustus lalu saya di Surabaya. Completely different from student work. Berbeda sama sekali pelayanan dengan pelayan mahasiswa. And that's why I am back here. Sebabnya saya kembali lagi. Uh, some of you don't know Pondok Kasi. Beberapa dari teman-teman mungkin tidak tahu Pondok Kasi. Does anybody know? See that this this is very interesting. Uh, Pondok Kasi was started by uh, a businesswoman about 20 years ago. Pondok Kasi ini didirikan oleh seorang pengusaha wanita 26 tahun yang lalu. Uh, it began it, it, um, when you picked me up today. I came from one building. The, across the street is her house. Uh, she used her resources in order to. Uh, she had no idea that God was leading her to a national work. Yang memakai sumber sumber dayanya dan tapi tidak tidak menyadari bahwa Tuhan sedang memimpin dia dalam satu pelayanan yang bersifat berskala nasional. She just wanted to help the poor children in the neighborhood. Awalnya dia hanya ingin membantu anak-anak miskin di lingkungannya. So she had a Sunday school class on Sunday afternoon in her house. Mengadakan kelas sekolah minggu di rumahnya. And from about 20 students, little children, it became 30, 40, 50. Hanya 20 siswa murid saja sampai 40-an. And God gave her a vision out of the book of Isaiah. Dan dari kitab Yesaya Tuhan memberi visi kepada dia. And called her to commit herself to helping the poor in all of Surabaya. Memanggil dia untuk melayani orang miskin di seluruh Surabaya. And also now in the last few years she has been sharing this vision with other pastors, other organizations. Dan di tahun-tahun terakhir ini dia sudah membagikan visinya kepada hamba-hamba Tuhan yang lain. She gets into these meetings, any kind of a meeting where she can share her burden for the poor. Dalam pertemuan apapun dia juga membagikan visi ini. When I was here in August, <coughs> Agustus lalu waktu saya di sini, it was to help to train the one uh, she had 200 volunteers and pastors saya melatih 200-an relawan atau pastor hamba uh, Tuhan and they have begun 140 140 uh, churches and fellowship groups in the slums of Surabaya okay. mereka ini menolong pelayanan di 140 Daerah-daerah miskin di Surabaya, titik-titik daerah miskin di Surabaya. They have, they have educational, uh, they have schools. Mereka pelayanan pendidikan juga. They have clinics. Pelayanan kesehatan juga. They have vocational training. Ada training-training. Anything that can help these poor people. Apapun dilakukan untuk menolong orang-orang miskin ini. Now she has a staff. Of about 65. Saat ini beliau punya staff 65. Besides the 200 workers out in the field. 
lain 400 yang lain yang di and these 200 are volunteers and these are the one that I came to train in August next August uh, no last, last August, August. Orang, orang ini yang saya latih Agustus lalu and I saw what God was doing saya melihat apa yang sedang Allah lakukan and I thought oh what a difference between student ministry and slum ministry apa perbedaannya pelayanan orang miskin dengan pelayanan mahasiswa Now, you see, I found, I saw my hand, student ministry and then slum ministry. That's a wrong way, that's a wrong attitude. Sikap yang keliru, menyemerendahkan pelayanan lain. God loves both equally. Karena Allah mengasihi kedua pelayanan itu sama. And in a real sense, when I trained, these people last August in basic Bible training said, oh it's no different from training for cantus saya melatih PA mereka PA dasar pada mereka dan saya waktu berpikir tidak ada bedanya sebetulnya they don't have the education that you have had mereka tidak berpendidikan sama seperti kalian but I didn't find any difference in attitude saya memperlakukan mereka sama as long, as long as the mind is open the heart is open selama pikiran kita terbuka hati kita juga terbuka they really want to know god what are you saying through us mereka betul-betul ingin mencari tahu apa yang Allah inginkan bagi mereka and what does it mean in practical terms apa apa Bagaimana mempraktekkan firman Tuhan dalam hidup? So that's why I came back uh, uh, this uh, two weeks. Itu sebabnya saya kembali ke Surabaya dua uh, minggu ini. I don't usually come back to a country that soon. <laughs> saya jarang kembali ke negara yang sama dengan waktu dalam waktu dekat. Uh, but um, God showed me very clearly that when I'm finished teaching my classes in Hawaii in November. Jelas, tapi Allah menuntut dengan jelas. Begitu saya selesaikan kelas saya di Hawaii November, bulan November. I have a two week break. Saya punya istirahat dua minggu. Before we begin again. Belum kami melanjutkan kembali. And and God led the way very clearly. Allah menunjukkan uh, kehendaknya dengan jelas pada saya. Meanwhile. Sementara itu. You did kept emailing me. And you did. Terus mengemail saya. Sometimes I love the email. <laughs> Kadang-kadang saya suka email-email dia. Sometimes I wish I did not have the email. <laughs> <laughs> Kadang saya, saya berharap tidak dapat email well, dari dia. Well, you know, it's like anything that God gives to us. You know, God can use it, and we have to know how to use it. So, well, she uh, asked, "Please, can you come?" You did mendesak, tolong datang. And uh, I said, uh, try to be very polite. Saya mencoba sopan. I said, you did. I said no the first one year ago, and I still say no now. Oh, itu sopan. <laughs> Tetap jawabannya tidak. But to be polite, I said, oh, um, why don't you ask Mama Hana? Okay, demi sopannya saya mengusulkan, coba undang Mama Hana. <laughs> And to my surprise, she did. She telephoned or she emailed or whatever. <laughs> and then today is Saturday. Last Monday, this week Monday, okay. she said, "This is the schedule." <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you have a very good worker in Udit. <laughs> I was totally surprised. Sangat terkejut tentunya saya. And also she said, I will not be there. Saya menjawab saya tidak akan datang. She has, oh, what shall I say? Uh, she had the vision that Mama Hana has. Dia punya visi yang sama dengan Mama Hana. And when you have that kind of vision, you don't keep on praying. You don't pray all the time. Kita tidak mendoakan visi terus menerus. 
you do something about it. Kita harus melakukan sesuatu, tidak hanya mendoakan visi itu. I know some Christians, they pray, 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 God, what shall I do? What shall I do? What shall I do? Ada orang Kristen yang terus menerus bertanya apa yang harus kulakukan Tuhan, apa yang harus kulakukan Tuhan. There's a, 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 a former student uh, in living in California now. Ya, dia mantan mahasiswa tinggal di California sekarang. He all telephones me once a week. Sabtu kali seminggu dia menelepon saya. And she's always asking, can you pray for me? What shall I do? What shall I do? What shall I do? Dino. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, I always tell her, stop praying and do something. Saya bilang ke dia berhenti berdoa, mulai lakukan sesuatu. And because I love her, I have to be very hard with her. Karena saya mengasihi dia, saya harus tegas pada dia. And I hope I don't think any of you are like that. Saya tidak berharap kalian semua seperti itu. Or you wouldn't be here. Because I hope that you that told you that when I do a workshop, a training course, I don't do all the talking. Kalau saya memimpin workshop atau training semacam ini, tidak selalu saya terus yang ngomong, yang memimpin. Now, this morning I talked a lot. Pagi ini saya sudah bicara banyak. Uh, because uh, uh, you need to know me. Karena kalian perlu mengenal saya. Because we're going to be with each other for three days. Karena tiga hari kita akan bersama-sama. So and it's all day. Dan sepanjang hari. And um, we already have many things in common. Kita sudah punya banyak persamaan. We are convinced that the student ministry is strategic. Kita ada orang-orang yang punya keyakinan kuat bahwa pelayanan mahasiswa itu sangat strategis. Now of course, I am amazed that there are these many staff workers with perkantas. Saya kagum dengan begitu banyaknya staff perkantas hari ini. Because in the early days in the 70s I went in and out, in and out of Indonesia. Era tahun 70-an saya keluar masuk pelayanan perkantas Indonesia. Ini. But after the 80s, when I was assigned to the London office. Tahun 80-an ketika saya mendaftar atau bergabung dengan pelayanan di London. I no London, longer came back to Indonesia. Saya tidak ke Indonesia lagi. But I would hear about what God was doing. Tapi saya mendengar apa yang Allah kerjakan di Indonesia. And, and uh, I would meet people like you did at international conferences. Saya ketemu orang-orang seperti Kak Yudit ini di kem nasional. So, eh, kem internasional. Of course I'm amazed to be with a group like this. Tentu saja saya terkejut dengan bisa bertemu sekelompok staff seperti okay. hari ini. And I can tell already this morning that many of you do not need translation. Uh, I can tell many of you do not need yeah. translation. Yes. <laughs> uh, but all of these years that I have worked around the world, I know I have groups like this also. And I want always that the junior staff, the youngest, the ones whose English is not as advanced, I want them, everybody to be what we, call, we say, everybody is on the same page. And, okay. Saya lakukan training di banyak tempat, sama kira-kira ada yang kurang bagus bahasa Inggrisnya. Kalau saya tekankan pada saat training harus buka halaman yang sama ketika Alkitab dibahas. Now, the topic that Judith gave me, how to prepare Bible study guides. Yang diberikan ke Judith adalah bagaimana membuat bahan PA. Is on the top level. Itu level advanced, materi level Every advanced. staff has to know this. Setiap staff harus mengetahuinya. I mean, that's your ministry. Itu pelayanan kalian. Yeah. When I first came to Asia, ketika saya datang ke Asia, and that's true of other countries in the pioneering days, ketika saya pergi ke negara-negara lain untuk merintis, 
we start with how do you how do you study the Bible inductively? Kita melatih PA induktif. Now whether it's university or slum community people, it's the same. Baik kepada mahasiswa maupun komunitas miskin itu sama aja yang dilatih. Kan? Basically, secara mendas. Of course, when I'm with them, I make it simpler, but it's the same. Okay, tentu saja saya menyederhanakannya, tapi sebetulnya sama PA induktifnya. I remember that Sun Sirigar. Ya, ingat Pak Sun Sirigar. Uh, said, I want you to come to my church in Jakarta. Pastikan mengundang saya ke gerejanya di Jakarta. By the way, who knows Sun Sirigar? Is he still living? Yes. Yeah. Oh really? Do you know his telephone number? Try and get it. I want to talk with him. Yeah. Okay. He's a very dear brother. So, um, and I lived with him and his family whenever I came to Jakarta. Um, he said one day, I want you to do the same thing with my elders, the elders of my church. Dia mengundang saya untuk mentraining uh, penatua-penatua tua gereja dia. And after about two or three sessions, he said to me. Setelah tiga dua tiga sesi dia berkata kepada saya. You are really teaching us how to think. Anda benar-benar melatih kita bagaimana berpikir. I said that's right. Because many people, not just in, in all over the world, with Christians, they read the Bible, they don't think. Banyak orang Kristen membaca Alkitab tapi tidak berpikir. There are many reasons for that. Ada banyak alasan mengapa itu terjadi. One reason may be when they grow up in the church, they hear the minister or some authority. Teaching the Bible. Salah satu alasannya adalah begitu lama mereka hanya terbiasa mendengar khotbah. And the the congregation thinks, wow, wow, how did he get all of that? Dan sebagai jemaat mereka hanya kagum akan khotbah itu. And most people assume that you have to do some kind of a spiritual magic. Dan merasa apa seperti pengalaman mistis gitu ya. It is something very special. <laughs> you must be struck by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> no. uh, when it's a, how do you read? How do you read the newspapers? How do you read your textbooks? How do you read about chemistry? About psychology? About politics, you read, you look for the facts. Bagaimana kita membaca koran atau buku-buku uh, uh, bidang-bidang ilmu yang kita pelajari? Sama sebenarnya kita harus membaca fakta-fakta dulu. Secondly, you look for the meaning of Kedua, those facts. kita mencari arti dari fakta-fakta itu. You get the meaning by linking facts to one another. Kita mendapat maknanya, artinya ketika kita menghubungkan fakta yang satu dengan fakta you begin lainnya. To see a bigger picture. Sehingga kita akan melihat gambar yang lebih besar. You begin to see deeper things. Dan kita akan mulai melihat hal-hal yang lebih mendalam. You begin to see broader. Hal-hal things. yang lebih luas. You begin to see, oh, this is like our life today. Dan bisa melihat kaitannya dengan kehidupan kita hari ini. Those people are like us. Orang-orang itu adalah orang-orang seperti kita. We are like those people here. Kita adalah orang-orang yang sama dengan orang-orang di Alkitab di dalam Alkitab. So the facts, the meaning, and then reflection. Jadi fakta, makna, dan reflek refleksi. It is not enough just to say I know the facts, I know the meaning. Jadi harus ketiganya tidak bisa kita merasa cukup dengan salah satu. Dari ketika Before you make application, sebelum kita membuat aplikasinya, there is a bridge. Ada jembatan between 
what the facts and the meaning you see to application. Jembatan antara fakta dan makna yang kita lihat dengan aplikasi. And that is reflection. Itu yang saya sebut dengan refleksi. In 2 Timothy 2:6. Dua Timotius pasal dua ayat enam. We don't have to look at it now, but write that down. 2 Timothy. Dua Timotius. Chapter two. Dua ayat enam. Verse six. Paul has told Timothy, "Be strong." Paulus beritahu Timotius supaya kuat. And this is how you are to be strong. One, two, three. And inilah caranya kamu menjadi kuat. Satu, dua, tiga. And he gives three examples. Paulus memberi tiga contoh. Then he concludes. Lalu Paulus menyimpulkannya. Every Bible passage has some kind of conclusion. Tiap paragraf, tiap perikop Alkitab itu punya semacam konklusi. So you always look for that conclusion. Kita harus selalu mencari konklusi itu. And Paul's conclusion in verse six. Dan konklusi Paulus di ayat enam itu. He says. Dia berkata. Think on these things that I have just told you. Pikirkanlah hal-hal yang sudah aku sebutkan kepadamu. Take time to reflect. Ambillah waktu untuk merefleksikannya. How true to life are these truths that I have just looked at? Bagaimana hidupmu dibandingkan dengan kebenaran-kebenaran yang baru saja saya sampaikan kepadamu? How do they link to my life, our life today? Bagaimana kebenaran itu juga sebetulnya sama mengubah? Terhubung dengan hidup kita hari ini. Now that takes time. Nah itu perlu waktu. It takes time to think. Berpikir itu perlu waktu. And that is where a lot of Christian, that's what they do not do. Itu yang tidak dilakukan banyak orang Kristen. They want someone to tell them, this is what it says, and this is what it means. Now you go and do it. Mereka hanya senang kalau ada orang yang beritahu ini yang harus kamu lakukan. Lalu no. mereka mentaati. Over and over and over again, it not just in 2 Timothy 2:6, but as, but for instance, especially in Psalm 1:19. Nah, ini itu tidak seharusnya tidak boleh dan tidak hanya 2 Timotius 2 ayat 6 tadi yang berkata begitu, tapi Mazmur 119 juga. 176 verses. 176. Ya. Yeah. 147 ayat. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> they tell us. <laughs> they tell us what to do with God's words. Ya, yeah, mereka memberitahu kita apa yang harus kita lakukan terhadap firman Tuhan. Ponder over them, meditate on them, consider them. Sometime when you when you have nothing else to do, go through Psalm 19 and underline all the verbs that tell you what to do with the Bible, with God's word. Kalau ada waktu luang, bikin coret-coretan di Mazmur 119 Alkitab kalian. Apa yang tentang kata-kata apa yang harus dilakukan terhadap Firman Tuhan? Now it is during that time of reflection. That you make the bridge between head knowledge and then life application. Okay, kalian ambil waktu memikirkan dan memilah-milah mana yang disebut kebenaran utama, lalu aplikasinya apa itu? And that is what you must know when you sit down to prepare a Bible study guide for the groups yang harus kalian lakukan sebelum memimpin kelompok PA. If you do not follow and especially concentrate on reflection, your guide will be useless. Anda tidak lakukan refleksi terhadap apa yang kalian baca dan temukan di Alkitab eh, akan sia-sia. And the more convinced you are, semakin kalian this yakin. This is a very practical uh, guideline. Bahwa teks tadi itu begitu aplikabel, begitu bisa diaplikasikan. You might as well not take this course. <laughs> Kalian mungkin tidak perlu ada acara training semacam ini. Because that's what we're going to do. 
Okay, now, um, do you have any questions so far? No question. Mm -hmm. Let me say this. The more intelligent you are, makin pintar kalian. The more questions you will have. <laughs> Makin banyak pertanyaan yang bisa kalian buat. So I'm going to watch who are the ones <laughs> that ask questions. Saya akan lihat siapa yang paling pintar, paling banyak bertanya. By the way, in the Gospels with Jesus, di Alkitab, di dalam Kitab Injil, <coughs> when he taught people. Kita Yesus mengajar orang. He was always asking questions. Dia mengajar dengan cara bertanya pada orang. One day, I went to the Gospel of Luke. Satu hari saya membaca kitab Lukas. I got that the longest gospel. Kitab Injil terpanjang. And I put in the margin of the Bible. Saya catat di pinggir, pinggir halaman itu. In pencil, not in pen. Pencil. Question mark. Every time I saw that Jesus asked people questions, I put a question mark. Saya beri tanda tanda, tanda tanya setiap kali saya membaca teks Yesus bertanya pada orang. How many question mark do you think that I found? Berapa kira kira yang saya temukan? Just just Dada guess. Dah hadiahnya, guess. Tebak aja. And the one that uh, ha comes the closest, I will give a very special pen. Yang paling mendekati, tebakannya itu dapat hadiah pulpen. People are always giving. Um, I live with two sisters. I live with two sisters. Saya tinggal dengan dua saudari. And uh, they are involved also in church work. Mereka tidak terlibat dalam pelayanan gereja. I don't know why they're always giving us pens. Saya tidak tahu mereka sering kasih saya pulpen. Now this one. Uh, even has my name on it. Ya ini bahkan yang ada nama saya saya akan jadikan hadiah hari ini. That is not what makes it valuable. Okay. <laughs> But the one that us comes the closest to answering my question will get this pen because it is the best pen <laughs> of the Lord. So. How many questions do you think that Jesus asked? Thirty. 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 Twenty. Ten, eight, twenty-five. Nobody gets a pen. One hundred fourteen. Eighty. You only said eighty. Eighty. <laughs> Now, of course, it would be uh, much better if it was all in Indonesian. Itu akan lebih baik kalau seandainya ini ada dalam bahasa Indonesia. But at least I know that you know enough English. Setidaknya kalian mengerti. Uh, now, before we go into this booklet, I think we'll have a five-minute break. Yeah, we'll have a little break. Because I see coffee there. <laughs> I'm ready for my morning coffee. <laughs> Let's take a five-minute break. Five, ten minutes, I'll, we'll see. And when you hear this, <laughs> you come back. Okay, let's take a break. Uh, because I did not prepare for these three days. Uh, usually, when I am given an assignment, I take weeks to prepare. Biasanya saya perlu berminggu-minggu untuk mempersiapkan materi. But already I was so involved in preparing for the Pondok Kasih training. Uh, so that I'm telling <laughs> So that I'm being very honest in saying that I have not prepared 
hour, hour by hour, what we are going to do. Okay. Saya tidak persiapan sebanyak biasanya untuk kalian di sini. I did not know you. Saya tidak mengenal kalian. And, uh, and uh, because things are in English. Dan semua materi dalam bahasa Inggris. Uh, so I said, well, I'm going to have to wait until I get there. Jadi saya juga harus membaca situasi di sini dulu. Now, the last time I did a course on how to prepare Bible study guide. Terakhir kali saya memimpin training semacam ini. It was really advanced. Itu level yang sangat advanced. It was for senior staff untuk, in India. Untuk staff senior di perkantas India. No junior staff. Tidak ada staff junior. And it was not just to prepare Bible study guide. It was to publish. How do we uh, write materials that will be published as a book? Itu untuk menghasilkan bahan-bahan PA yang akan dipublikasikan, dicetak ya di India. And it was only for senior staff from all over the country. Jadi hanya staff senior yang hadir waktu itu. And we had 10 days. Dan kita perlu 10 hari. We work all day and all night. Uh, no, different, oh. different. Sepuluh hari ya. But, you see, so it's different from this course. Oke, okay, berbeda dengan training hari ini. Uh, so I have that in my mind. The Indian uh, um, course. Uh, I, uh, I, the, the last course that I did, similar to this, was much more advanced. Okay. Yes. Because we were writing, I was teaching them, how do you rewrite Bible studies for publication for the whole country? Yeah. <coughs> uh, so it was a, a group about as big as this. And I divided them into one, two, three, four groups. Membagi mereka dalam empat kelompok. And eventually, every group produced one Bible study guide. Setiap kelompok akan menghasilkan satu bahan PA. On uh, uh, four related subjects. Tema-tema yang saling terkait. One group wrote Bible study guides for seekers. Satu kelompok membuat bahan PA untuk orang yang belum percaya. They're not yet Christians, but they're interested in Christianity. Yeah. And then secondly, the second group kelompok kedua uh, wrote Bible study guides for beginning Christians. Membuat bahan PA untuk Baru. The third group wrote Bible study guide, a Bible study guide for um, mature Christians. Untuk orang Kristen dewasa, And the fourth group wrote Bible study guides for Christian leadership. And by the time we had Uh, we were about, let's say, halfway through. They had to already have everybody wrote a Bible study guide. Sampai di separuh training mereka sudah menyelesaikan bahan PA itu. The second half, then, I had the staff edit one another's guides. Okay, separuh training itu untuk untuk saling menga, mempertajam bahan yang dihasilkan antar And kelompok itu. The last uh, two or three days, tiga hari terakhir, I went over every Bible study guide saya, and to edit it. Saya meneliti semua bahan PA yang dihasilkan dan menambahkan sesuatu pada bahan-bahan itu. And by the end of ten days, di hari ke sepuluh. We had the first manuscript. Kita untuk perkantas India punya 
bahan pertama. Now, that doesn't mean that it was ready for publication. Yang siap untuk dipublikasikan. We chose two of the most senior staff workers in Bible study. Kita memilih dua staff yang paling senior. And for the next three months or so, tiga, untuk tiga bulan kemudian, they did the Indian edita- editing. Mereka meng- menterjemahkannya dalam bahasa India. And then they sent it back to me. Dan mereka mengirimkan and I looked over it again to give some professional advice of how to improve the overall presentation. So you see, it is a process. In this course, that is not what we are going to do. We are not writing in order to publish. We would need much more time. Kita perlu lebih banyak waktu. Actually, uh, we had to go up on a mountain retreat for 10 days. We lived together, we worked together, we prayed together. Mereka yang perlu lebih banyak waktu. Retreat di tempat. Di rumah retreat yang khusus di sana untuk membuat bahan. Nah, Iwan was just telling me a few minutes ago that you have had courses on how to prepare a Bible study guide. Nah, masing-masing kita sudah punya bahan untuk disampaikan mahasiswa sebelumnya ya, bahan membuat bahan PA ini. But it was just about what two hours? Yes, yeah, three session, three, three set, three hours, four hours. Okay, three four hours, and that was it. Well, I'm very glad that you have had that experience. Ya, saya senang kalian punya pengalaman mengajarkan membuat bahan PA itu kepada mahasiswa. Uh, uh, because I did write to you, answer when I answered you did and I did very honestly say I hope you are not being too idealistic. <laughs> Karena waktu itu saya bilang Kak Yudit memang Yudit jangan terlalu idealistik. Uh, And, and, and that, um, and then I realized that it was not the same assignment as for the India. Saya sadar ini tidak sama ketika saya mentraining tap-tap di India itu. If you can prepare Bible study guides just for your uh, campus, that's very basic, very good. That's a good start. Awal yang bagus kalau tiap kita sudah punya pengalaman mentraining membuat bahan PA di kampus. Now, because I did not have time uh, to prepare a new course, I am uh, just going back on my past experience, and I am uh, uh, see how you respond. Then I will know what to do next. Okay, karena saya tidak punya waktu khusus untuk mempersiapkan bahan baru, jadi saya hanya menyampaikan bahan-bahan lama yang saya punya, dan saya, kita akan lihat. Nanti respon kalian terlebih dahulu. So you pray for me. You pray for me that I will know God guidance how to proceed from step to step. Jadi kalian perlu mendoakan saya supaya tahu nanti perkembangan. Saya tahu nanti bagaimana mengarahkan kalian selanjutnya. Now, uh, don't be afraid. <laughs> I have done this for many many student movements. But I want to know how to adapt it to your situation. So I need God's guidance. Pada dasarnya saya sudah sering melakukan training seperti ini, tapi khusus setiap-tiap kelompok harus punya pendekatan khusus. So you pray for me and you pray for yourself. That you will know how to take in what to do with what we are doing here. Supaya kita Tahu sendiri bagaimana menerapkannya di lingkup pelayanan kita masing-masing. So I want to stop right now and pray. And I want to suggest you do it in groups of three. Uh, I call this a a triad. I have 
found through the years in working with groups. Dari that pengalaman saya. If I just talk, 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 that is the least effective way of learning. Kalau cuma saya yang bicara-bicara itu kurang maksimal dampaknya. The more you do, the more you learn. Makin kalian, kalian terlibat melakukan sesuatu dalam training, semakin can, banyak yang kalian pelajari. But you cannot do if I am not clear in giving the instructions and why we do things. Tapi kalian tidak bisa mempraktekkannya kalau saya juga tidak jelas di dalam menerangkannya. And whether it is in my Sunday school class at church on Sunday morning or my Bible Institute classes, I like to use triads. Jadi dalam mengajar siapapun, mengajar sekolah minggu sampai mahasiswa di When you have Alkitab, own, I give you and I say, please do this, please talk about this. If there are only two, I find that there is a kind of a psychological pressure between the two people. Kalau berdua kelompok dua-dua ada semacam ketegangan antara dua orang itu. If you have five, six in a small group, you will find that some people will talk and some people will not talk. Kalau lebih dari tiga akan ada yang bicara, ada yang nggak bicara. The bigger the group gets, the fewer people participate proportionately. Makin besar kelompok, partisipasi tiap anggota itu tidak pas. Gitu. Three, three has been shown, I don't care which culture it is, that it is a very good group dynamic. Jumlah tiga ini sudah terbukti efektif untuk dinamika kelompok. Because when one uh, a person is speaking, there will be two responses. Yep, satu orang bicara ada dua orang merespons. Sometimes only two people are talking. Kadang-kadang hanya satu orang yang bicara. The third person can listen better. Orang ketiga bisa mendengarkan lebih baik. And of course, listening is very crucial to learning. Tentu mendengar juga penting di dalam proses belajar. The Bible, whether it's the Old Testament or the New Testament, Alkitab PL maupun PB is very strong on group learning. Sangat menekankan belajar di dalam kelompok. I would like for us to turn to the book of Colossians in the New Testament. And many people are very surprised about this example from Paul in Banyak. writing to the Colossian believers. Hanya orang terkejut dengan cara Paulus chapter 3 verse 16. Now you can tell, you should be able to tell. If I say chapter 3, then you know I'm not at the beginning. I am pretty much, uh, there are four chapters in Colossians. You know then, I'm past the halfway mark of Colossians. Melewati tiga pasal, melewatkan tiga pasal, kita langsung di tengah dari kitab ini. In all of Bible study, whether it is preaching from the pulpit, or teaching a class or leading a group di dalam mempersiapkan PA entah itu untuk khotbah atau untuk PA kelompok or your personal study bahkan untuk PA pribadi whether you are reading only one verse entah kita hanya membaca hanya satu ayat or one paragraph atau satu perikop or even a chapter atau pasal you must know what is the background? Apa background? Latar belakang dari What did the writer say before this verse, before this paragraph? Kita harus tahu apa yang dikatakan penulis di perikop sebelumnya. It is what we call the context. Itu yang kita sebut dengan konteks. Now, you know that in the first hour, I took a lot of time to tell you of uh, my relationship to Percantus. Tadi 
saya cerita tentang a little bit of what God has uh, given me to do through all of these years in student ministry. Ya, tentang kehendak Tuhan yang harus saya lakukan di dalam pelayanan mahasiswa selama ini. Because before 7:30 this morning, I knew nobody in this group. Sebelum setengah delapan, jam setengah delapan pagi ini saya sama sekali tidak mengenal kelompok ini. And you did not know me. Kalian juga tidak mengenal saya. Except by name and a little bit of what I have been doing. Hanya mendengar saja sedikit tentang saya. I deliberately told you stories. Jadi sengaja saya menceritakan so kisah. So you would get to know me. Supaya kalian mengenal saya. My context. Itu adalah konteks saya. Now this is very important in Bible study. You have to know the context. Kita harus tahu konteksnya. Because people very often interpret something wrong because they did not see the context. Karena sering orang salah mengartikan arti makna teks itu karena tidak tahu. Oh yeah, I am very pleased that I look at this group and I see half of you are women, half of you are men. Saya senang kelompok ini imbang antara laki-laki dan perempuan. Because there are some cultures, Christian cultures, where they don't believe that women should have leadership. Karena ada beberapa kelompok Kristen yang tidak percaya bahwa perempuan Now, bisa boleh jadi pemimpin. Obviously, Procantus doesn't believe that. Tentu saja Procantus tidak meyakini hal seperti itu. And the very fact, the very fact that you have invited me, a woman. To teach a course with men in it. Buktinya kalian mengundang saya seorang perempuan untuk memimpin training ini. But you know very well that's not true for all Christian churches. Tapi ada orang-orang Kristen yang Now, I don't berbeda. Fight, I don't fight it. <laughs> saya tidak sedang meng. But I want to demonstrate by my example. Saya tidak mendebat tapi saya memperagakan. <laughs> And of course, I want eventually you to know what is the biblical backing for the fact that I can I can teach a woman I can teach. Saya punya dukungan Alkitab. Mengapa saya boleh mengajar? So you see, context is important. Di konteks. So penting. we're going to do a lot in triads. Now look in. Uh, uh, okay. Now uh, 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 divide yourself up right now into triads. Let's start okay. with this three. Eh, hu hu, triad, 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 triad. Okay, find your group. Uh, now, for the for the rest of the day, you will be working in this triad. Every time I give an assignment. Are you happy? Are you happy with your partners? Okay, too late. It's too late for you to change. <laughs> um, now, in every group. There is now. I'm telling things that you can use for your student group, and that is in any group among human <laughs> beings, there is naturally a leader that arises. Secara natural, nanti ada pemimpin kelompok yang muncul dari interaksi tiga orang ini. Now, in a staff uh, a training course, you are all leaders. Oh, di dalam ini semua staff, jadi semua pemimpin. But usually, amongst the students, you sometimes have to say, uh, "Choose a leader in your group." Now, in an in, in such an informal, sometimes we use the word facilitator. facilitator. And it is different, a little different, from a leader. Tidak berbeda dengan arti pemimpin atau ketua kelompok. Uh, this word facilitator comes from the word, the verb facilitate. Dari kata kerja facilitate. And that means that that person is responsible for moving the group along. Tanggung jawab orang itu adalah untuk membawa kelompok untuk it bergerak more, lebih it is maju more lagi. Informal. Lebih informal sifatnya. Whereas a leader has to do preparation. Ahead of time. A leader harus ada persiapan dan sebagainya. I never know when he's going to. And so when he doesn't talk, you decide. That's very obvious. That's why I have to look at you. Are you going to translate that? Shall I go continue? 
um, but we're all very informal here. Uh, now, just for practice, I want you to, um, to have a facilitator, that you, that you naturally move the group along. Uh, you know, uh, and the aim is to answer the one question that is given to the group. Now, my responsibility is to make that instruction simple and clear. It mustn't be complicated. For a small group, one subject at a time. Satu topik dalam setiap kali hanya satu topik. Now this is going to be a little hard because, as I said, this is not in Indonesian, so you have to read the English. Agak sulit dan banyak bahasa Inggris. But you are per counter staff. <laughs> you are very intelligent, <laughs> and um, and I will try to be sensitive how. We move along. Saya akan coba peka untuk bagaimana saya melanjutkan training. Sometimes I will make the mistake of being too simple. Kadang-kadang saya membuat kesalahan membuatnya terlalu sederhana. Is it not a mistake? It's not really a mistake. Bukan satu kesalahan. You know, because of the situation, we're both learning. Karena kita saling belajar di dalam konteks ini. And this is good. I think that we will have an experience in these three days of helping one another. Kita akan punya pengalaman saling menolong dalam tiga hari ini. And that's what Colossians 3:16 is all about. Itulah yang dimaksud dalam Kolose 3:16 ini. Now the context is that this is a very young church. Konteksnya adalah ini untuk gereja yang masih muda. All of the letters in the New Testament were written by missionary pastors. Paul, Peter, John, Jude, and, and, the right, and the writer of the book of Hebrews. There's no name. We don't know who the author is. Although some people think it was a woman. <laughs> and they think it was Priscilla, uh, the wife of Aquila. Very interesting, but I'm not going to tell you about that. <laughs> so, but these missionary pastors, they were going all over the Roman Empire and planting churches. Just the way that Pondok Kasi is going to the slum communities of Surabaya and other cities to plant churches. In the case of the New Testament, it's very clear that they had to move Paul and Peter and the others. They would stay in a place as long as they could until they find local leaders rising up. Mereka tinggal di daerah itu sampai mereka menemukan atau mendapatkan satu pemimpin lokal. And then they turn the responsibility over to them. Dan menyerahkan tanggung jawab kepada mereka. While they go on to another um, country. Baru kemudian melanjutkan perjalanan. Now, brothers and sisters, that's exactly what you are called to do. I was originally I was called for Asia and then eventually here in Indonesia. And then when when we saw not it was just, it was not just uh, me but my IFES colleagues. Masuk juga rekan-rekan saya di IFES. We give all the help that we can until we see you can do it. Kami hanya memberikan bantuan sebisa yang kami lakukan dan kalian yang harus melanjutkan. And that's what you are doing with the students, exactly the same thing. Kalian juga harus melakukan seperti itu kepada mahasiswa, hanya memperlengkapi mereka untuk. 
You Mereka teach lanjut. and train leaders. Hanya kalian melatih dan mentraining pemimpin-pemimpin mahasiswa. Not everybody is a leader. Bukan semua mahasiswa adalah pemimpin. And perhaps uh, I'll see what happens in these three days. I'm fascinated by the way that Jesus had hundreds of disciples, but he chose only 12 to give intensive leadership training to. Saya kagum melihat Yesus begitu punya banyak murid tapi hanya memilih 12 orang untuk di-training. And that's what Paul did. Itu juga yang dilakukan Paulus. And in this letter, he is writing to a first generation of Christians. Dalam surat ini Paulus menulis kepada generasi pertama orang Kristen. There are four chapters. Ada empat pasal. And typically, when Paul wrote his letters and the others, the first part is teaching. The second part is application. Ikas Paulus dalam surat-surat itu bagian pertama adalah pengajaran, bagian kedua adalah aplikasi dari pengajaran itu. And as it happens in the book of Colossians with four chapters. Itu nampak juga di kitab Kolose ini, surat Kolose ini. The first two chapters Paul is teaching about the supreme position of Jesus Christ as the head of the church. Dua pasal pertama Paulus mengajarkan kedudukan Kristus yang sangat utama the bagi gereja. The second half, chapter 3 and chapter 4 is the practical application of the first two chapters. Pasal 3 dan 4 aplikasi praktis dari pengajaran di pasal 1 dan 2. Now you can see this in the book of Ephesians. Kita juga bisa lihat yang sama, pola yang sama di kitab Efesus. There are six chapters. Ada 6. The first three pasal. the first three uh, uh, are focused on uh, practically the same topic. Who is Jesus? Why is he Lord? Tiga pasal pertama tentang Yesus juga, mengapa ia disebut Tuhan? Chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. Then the last three chapters, chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6. Application of this great teaching on the person of Jesus. Tiga pasal terakhir itu aplikasi praktis dari pengajaran yang luar biasa di Now, pasal 1 sampai 3. Now, all of Paul's letters are that neat. That's very neat. You know, Tentu exactly tidak semua surat Paulus serapi itu polanya. Uh, the book of Romans is from chapter 1 until chapter 11. Misalnya kita Roma tidak. And then from chapter 12 to 16, you have the application. But so that see, I'm adding things as I go along to give you the big context. I, 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 never mind. I won't tell you about that. Now, um, in Colossians chapter 3:16, if you look at the beginning of the chapter, kita lihat pasal pertama awal dari pasal tiga ini. He begins with the phrase in English anyway. Since then, karena itu dalam bahasa Indonesia. Now, in Bible study. Or, or any kind of language, whether it's uh, Greek or English or Indonesian, there are certain little words that a writer, a speaker, a teacher will use to help the group move along. Ya, dalam bahasa apapun, pembicara atau penulis akan menggunakan satu kata untuk sebagai penghubung untuk berpindah dari topik for, yang pertama untuk pindah ke yang topik berikutnya. For instance. I said when it was nine o'clock. I said, "Oh, let's have a break." Because I see coffee over there. Kita akan break karena, karena saya melihat kopi di sana. Now listen to my sentence. Perhatikan kalimat saya. In the morning, I drink coffee. Pagi hari saya minum kopi. Because I want to be Awake. Karena saya ingin tetap terjaga. Now the first part is my action. I drink coffee. Saya minum kopi. The second half of my sentence, because I must keep awake, gives the reason why I drink coffee. Kalimat berikutnya adalah alasan mengapa saya melakukan. So the key word is. Because it introduces 
reason. Okay, yang memperkenalkan alasan. Now there are other words, at least in English, but I'm sure also in Indonesian, there are other words that you can use to introduce reason. Tentunya ada beberapa kata yang digunakan untuk tujuan yang sama. Or to introduce purpose. Jelaskan tujuan atau alasan. This word, or these two words, since then, what do you think it means? Or what, what is it in Indonesian? Since karena itu, then. Karena itu, because of that. <laughs> literally, yeah, literally because of that. You're supposed to translate that. Okay. But he answered it. See? He answered it because he got excited. Oh, I got, I understand. <laughs> yeah, okay, say it again. Say it in Indonesian. Karena itu. Because of that. Yeah. <laughs> I have said this, 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 this now. Because of what I have said here, this is my practical conclusion. And it's a practical conclusion. Okay. Um, so watch out for those little words. I have a whole lesson uh, in when I teach how to study the Bible. I have one whole lesson on understanding these little words that introduce the, 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 the thinking of the, uh, the writer. Penting memperhatikan kata sambung seperti ini. Now, if you look at the beginning of chapter 3, perhatikan ayat 1, pasal 3. And I, and I want you to do this now. From chapter, uh, from verse 1 until, say, uh, verse 14. You read it for yourself. What are these verses about? He has been, Paul has been talking about, the, given a high view of Jesus Christ. Tentang apa sebenarnya ayat 1 sampai 14 ini? Setelah Paulus menjelaskan pentingnya atau supremasi Kristus di pasal okay. pasal Since then, because of this high view of Jesus Christ, yeah. you have been raised with Christ. Yeah, karena kamu telah dibangkitkan bersama dengan Kristus. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Yeah. Carilah perkara yang di atas di mana Kristus ada duduk di sebelah kanan Allah. In a way, it's a summary conclusion of chapters 1 and 2. Kalimat itu sebetulnya rangkuman dari pasal 1 sampai 3. That it should affect us. Harusnya ini penting kita perhatikan. Then in verse 2 until uh, verse uh, 14. Ayat 2 sampai 14. I want you to read this. Saya ingin kalian membacanya. And afterwards, you discuss it in your triad. Dalam, ber, dalam kelompok bertiga-tiga itu. What difference does it make if you as a Christian say, I believe all these things about Jesus Christ in chapters 1 and 2. What is the practical application? Okay, Take about 10 minutes. I'll watch you to see how you're coming along. But individually, take about 10 minutes. What is the practical application of chapters 1 and 2? Okay. Kehidupan Kristen. Silakan. Cermati di ayat 2 sampai 14. Do you think that they need more light there? That over there? I don't know. Well, I don't want you to have an excuse that I couldn't read. Thank you, Yudi.
it. I know you can read this passage. I know what this is passage about. I want in-depth discussion. is to understand apa yang Paulus ingin katakan pada pembaca pertama and let me give you an, a, a, a big clue about how to read new testament letters saya beri petunjuk untuk membaca surat-surat perjanjian baru that's why i gave you the statement these were written by missionary pastors to young churches okay, itu tadi clue-nya ya ini adalah surat-surat yang ditujukan eh, ditulis oleh Misionari, seorang misionaris pada gereja yang masih sangat muda. Different from you and me today. Bukan orang-orang seperti kita surat ini ditujukan. They did not have 2000 years of church history. Ya, gereja masih baru berkembang waktu itu. Hari ini gereja sudah They did tahun not usianya. have they did not have training courses like this. Mereka tidak punya training-training. They did not have specialized ministry like a student ministry. Zaman itu belum ada pemisahan pelayanan, pelayanan. This is the mahasiswa. first time in history that Christians have come together. Okay. Itu adalah secara awal dari kekristenan. They came out of raw paganism. Yeah. Kristenan baru muncul dari tengah-tengah. Kafiran dunia kekafiran waktu itu. They didn't Colossians didn't even have the Jewish background. Bahkan jemaat Kolose tidak punya background Yudaisme. Everything is new to them. Kalau sesuatu baru, tenang dan tenang itu baru. Now, the problem that Paul faces is that even though they are they have become believers. Ya, petunjuk keduanya untuk Kolose ini meskipun baru sudah menjadi orang percaya. Their lives were still still reflected their Christ, uh, their non-Christian background. Kehidupan mereka masih mencerminkan pola hidup mereka sebelum jadi Kristen. Now I want you to go back and read the same passage. Okay, kembali baca ayat-ayat itu. And try to imagine, try to visualize the situation. Coba bayangkan situasi yang seperti yang They're adults. They don't. They don't. In those days, nobody owned Bibles. Belum ada yang punya Alkitab. And as I uh, reminded you, they did not have 2,000 years of church history. Probably only some of them were new believers, or maybe five, six, seven years. That's all the Christian history they had. Oh, okay. Everybody understand. <laughs> Now, how do I know if they they understand or they don't understand? Similar to what you have said before. You can tell. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so I want you to go back and read this passage in with that context. Okay, baca kembali dengan petunjuk yang saya beri tadi ya. Situasinya waktu itu konteks. And let me give you another help. Even though, as a whole, they, he's talking to believers. Meskipun dia bicara menulis kepada orang-orang percaya. What was their practical life like? Bagaimana kehidupan praktis mereka? Now this is where I said I want to give you a big clue whenever you read the New Testament letters. Akan beri petunjuk setiap membaca surat perjanjian And baru. That is, the writers of these letters kept these people in mind. They were thinking about them when they were writing. He knows what they are like. Penulis surat ini tahu persis seperti apa kehidupan pembacanya. And itu. he is addressing his teaching, his application. According to what he knows about them at that time. Mereka menulis suratnya dan memberikan pengajaran sesuai dengan situasi pembacanya waktu itu. Now I want you to go back and look at this passage. 
What were these Colossian Christians like at that time? Okay, baca kembali ayat-ayat itu supaya kita bisa menerka kehidupan orang-orang Kolose itu seperti apa. They were Christians. Mereka Kristen. But what were they still struggling with? Tapi pergumulan apa yang mereka sedang hadapi? A writer will not say do this or don't do that. Orang penulis tidak akan memerintahkan lakukan ini, jangan lakukan itu. Unless he knows that that's what's going on. Kalau mereka tidak tahu apa yang terjadi. So what is going on in the Colossian church? Jadi apa yang terjadi dalam gereja Kolose ini? You can learn a lot by reading. Can go back and then that is what I'm going to ask you to share in your triad. Kita bisa tangkap itu dari ayat-ayat ini. Okay. So, nanti take another five minutes answering that question. Menit what was the realistic situation at that time of the Colossians? Situasi jemaat Kolose waktu itu seperti apa? Tolong dalam lima menit diskusikan. To start talking, that's good. You, you have to translate that. <laughs> Okay, now, believe it or not, I want you to have 10 minutes. But, 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 I see all of this good food here. <laughs> no, when I say but, that little word introduces what? Okay, new topic. What? Reason. Um, Purpose. No, no. <laughs> Fu Fuma, what's her name? Fu yeah. Funa. It's different. The first, the two parts are different. I want you to talk, but I see the food. So we're going to have a break. We're going to have a break. Everybody has one, don't yeah. they? Okay. <laughs> And in your style. Only, oh. se <laughs> only seniors now. <laughs> okay. Uh, now I'll tell you later on why I am giving you a break. Because I'm going to teach you how to think creatively. It needs food to think creatively. <laughs> okay, let's have a break. Okay.